slow. Just letting a few people come in. Kill the music. Kill the chill music. <laughs> I like the music. You like the music. I've got down tempo, chill hop, hip hop, low five. <laughs> DJ Piers Linney. No. So I'll give it a few minutes. So you, can see, you can watch this on um, our website, forward slash live um, events, or YouTube, or LinkedIn. And that's it, we're going to do a Q&A. So if you want to interact and ask questions or suggestions, maybe, so we can see them and interact with them, and maybe put them on. Yeah, you need to go onto um, either LinkedIn or YouTube rather than our website. But there's links on our website page as well to take you there. So yeah, we can see the thumbs up from James Shamsey. How are you? Hope you're good. So Piers, whose favorite subject is this today? Definitely yours. <laughs> I've spent too many years in voice. <laughs> um, well, this is uh, quite exciting stuff. So let's um let's get cracking actually because we've got quite a few people in. Um, we'll, we'll leave it in this sort of format. All right, go for it. So the first thing is you can see there, top left uh, on my side screen anyway. There's a, a QR code. So if you scan that, you can get our what we call our AI toolkit. So that's got um, a couple of our sort of foundational white papers. So our AI assisted organization white paper, which is kind of it's kind of our framework and how we help companies implement AI. There's also one in there about AI agents, so augmenting your workforce as well, quite an important one. And there's a workbox in there, but they're, they're the main, the two key documents and it's definitely worth um, downloading as we go through this meeting at your leisure. So we've got about whew, 50 slides. Um, <laughs> we need to crack on. We're gonna write some of these, but the, the, the key today is to focus on um, AI voice agents and, and give you some real world demos as well. Cool, so great. So hi to Nin as well. So Piers, do you give a little quick intro about yourself? Yes, I'm Piers Linney, um, co-founder, exec chairman of Implement AI. We founded it with uh, Dr. Alok Shukla, who will introduce himself in a moment. So my background is um, sort of finance city. I'm a lawyer as well by training. I uh, spent quite a few years uh, as a trustee of um, things like Nesta, did a lot of sort of research into robotics and AI and its impact on the economy. But really, I'm a technology sort of entrepreneur investor. I've done a bit of TV, so I was a dragon on Dragon's Den, that shark tank if you're American. And I was a secret millionaire, one of my friends said. I kept that very secret. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, that's my background. My name is Alok. I'm a technologist. I have a background in health, technology, and also AI. And um, we, Piers, we met like in 2019, isn't it? Right? Like, yeah, I did a podcast for a bank in the UK called NatWest, and Alok was one of my guests. And we just we kept bumping into each other randomly. And yeah, yeah. So it's, it's good. And then, and then, like last year, when we were discussing different things, the, the idea, is in the name. We, I was basically explaining the more the more we explained about the possibilities of AI with different trainings that we were doing, the more people were like, can you help implement it? And implement AI was born, basically, isn't it? So well, we focus on um, sort of SMEs, really, or our clients go from kind of a million in revenue to sort of four hundred million. Um, anyway, we'll come back to that. So here's today's agenda. So we're going to do a little bit of an intro, if you don't know who we are and haven't interacted with us before, about the AI assisted organisation and why we're all here. And then we're going to talk about AI-driven competitive advantage. Clearly, it's very important. That's what it's all about, really. And then how to utilize the power of AI voice agents. I'm going to give you some actual proper demos because we've actually developed this. And then have a Q&A. So a Q&A seems to be the, the best part of this. Just touching on like AI-driven competitive advantage, every single day we're having calls with different businesses. And I love non-technology businesses. Businesses that do like real stuff, basically like, you know, shifting atoms in the real world, cleaning things, fitting things, doing things, different stuff like this, because we're showing different demos of different technologies. And it's always amazing at what you can do now that you couldn't do six months ago. And the thing is, you have to get started now because there's so many more capabilities and you can really get a significant advantage, Piers, isn't it? You can really reshape your industry dynamics. Well, what's quite interesting, a lot of companies we talk to, um, they were thinking about digital transformation, never kind of got around to it. They're thinking about cloud transition, never quite got around to it. 
Whereas AI, you kind of have to because it's moving very quickly. We kind of kind of leap for quite a few of those things. Um, so exciting time. Exactly. Okay, so these are the white papers that we mentioned. Just to kind of show you, our goal is to basically help leaders within companies really understand all the tools and technologies. So do download them, read them, we put a lot of effort into making sure it's as easy and accessible for business owners. So you've got the information that you can kind of just grab there. And like Piers mentioned, there's a little QR code at the top of the page. We've also got our podcast, Piers. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, so we've got a podcast called the AI Assisted Organization Podcast. Um, we do this weekly. Um, we just started again after a bit of a hiatus in January. So what we what we do now really, we've tried to change the format. So we talk about AI for business news. So we focus on AI for business, not you know, so, you know deep fakes of Leonardo DiCaprio, which is quite interesting. Potentially the, the potential of that, but we focus on what does this mean for you and your business and your sector and for making more money essentially. So we talk about that. And then we have a theme each week. So this week, last week, episode 32, I think it is, we've yeah. gone back to basics, you know, how do you start implementing AI? Because quite often we we get, get kind of lost in the weeds and so the, the detail and complexity. And really a lot of people are saying to us, that's great, it's 2024, where do I start? That's what we've done. Exactly. And as I say, like the whole point here is that what we're gonna be talking about today really is how AI voice agents can be part of your augmented workforce. So you've got your payroll, and you've got your AI role. I'm, I'm, I'm testing that word. If you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, I'll kill it. But you've got your payroll and your AI role. And the whole point is to have like your expanded team that can work for you, which is both people and technology. And um, the whole point is like, you have both those things working together. You have some new advantages, basically. And that's gonna be initially sort of cognitive labor. I want to call it that, some knowledge workers. And what's quite interesting is that it's going to be the most expensive knowledge workers because the ROI is there. And then eventually you're going to see, you know, sort of physical labor robotics. And this this pentagram, I think, is here. It's kind of, you know, at, at, at the outside is kind of, you know, very little sort of um, AI. It's more human first. And in the middle, you've got kind of full autonomy. So the way our model works really is we look at different departments, workflows, processes, even people, and we try and help them become more AI assisted the point where eventually we're not quite there yet uh, it'll become autonomous exactly so this is where we are isn't it Piers? yes yeah, so this is this is the chart which really shows it's, it's what the chart chart's trying to do is th two things really one is you've got this period of human first which is kind of like two hundred thousand years almost in terms of our evolution then you've got the ai assisted period which kind of really started in earnest probably a, a year ago there's been kind of machine learning for 50 years. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of big companies have been throwing money at various algorithms for probably 20 years. But in terms of companies, any company, any person would have an access technology, maybe a year. And that's, so we're in that era right now. And eventually, we're going to enter into a period where it's not AI assisted, it's AI first. It's not even human first as well. So we're not quite there yet. It'll be cognitive first. And eventually, it's going to be um, physical labor as well. But the other second point here is that humans always think that on this curve wherever we are and we see this all the time they say oh well it's very very clever very good but it, it doesn't do this you're like well yeah but that's today and ai we always say it's the worst it's ever going to be today so on that curve there the green line the blue line the red line humans think that wherever we are it's going to continue in a linear fashion we can't quite comprehend exponential change and that's the, yeah. that, that's what we need to get our heads around the, and my my point would be that this is curve is not really a curve it's more like this. And we're, we're, we've gone across the base and we're right now we're in the elevator going straight up. So the, the capabilities are releasing and, and changing every single week, basically. You know, so that's the point of like you have to become a, a you know, you have to become AI assisted because you can have right now there is a window to get an asymmetric competitive advantage. You can do something and deliver something which other companies cannot do. And that's the whole point of making sure that you have that. Yeah. And the point here is, is that. Eventually, you know, a lot of the other AI technology, the SaaS companies, you know, Microsoft Copilot, you know, Google Gemini, everyone's going to have it. Yeah, it's going to be like spell check. So the question is, how do you use this technology to create a sustainable competitive advantage above and beyond what everybody else has got? And this is what this, this picture we created here is trying to show is, that, you know, you can have uh, the period of time now in this sort of era, the next sort of maybe two to five years maximum, I'd say two, where you can create some real what we call unfair advantage and uh, exactly. we see our clients transform their businesses exactly so just going to give you the high level quick thing 
There's generalist AI and specialist AI. Generalist AI is like a lot of these things which are just off the shelf, like Copilot, different things like this. Specialist AI is like stuff you only have for your business with your data. And that's where the real real advantages kind of come from. And that's what we kind of like talk about. So this is something we're, we're developing, the AI operating system. So essentially it's a, a framework, a platform. So the point is, is that, and some companies, you know, if you're a larger company, you've got lots of processes, systems, you know, a legacy essentially, this is harder to do. A lot of SMEs, the beauty of it is, is that you can sort of insert an AI operating system immediately. And what that means is when you build your business, your revenues are growing, your costs aren't quite tracking as they used to. And if you're in M&A, it means that you can generate more synergies. Exactly. So the whole point is that you're going to create dramatically re-engineer your operational cost structure because you increase the capacity, you increase the speed and you lower the cost as well. Yes, yeah, so the, the, this is what we call a double AI effect, which is not rocket science, but you can look at sort of revenue and cost as well. There's two ways of looking at it. But we're taking, today really focusing on capacity, so increased capacity and increased productivity as well. And what that really means is, is that we're trying to boost both in uh, terms of lowering costs. And what that's going to generate is more profit, more margin, and more valuable businesses and more wealth. Exactly. And the capacity means that you've got AI agents like voice agents, we're going to talk about how they can be doing tasks, reaching out to more people per day so that your business can then work on things. Because if you use the AI as a front end to engage more people, then it means that the warm, qualified people come back to your skilled people that you have within your business, basically. And the point now, like I just say, is that people say, oh, well, you know, AI can't do a job. Okay, maybe it can't. What it can do, though, is five to 10 to 15 of the tasks that a human doing that job does. So we're talking about augmenting to increase capacity and these things don't sleep. Exactly. And imagine, like, for example, you've got people that need to be called at 7 p.m. A human person can only call one person at 7 p.m. AI could call 50 people at 7 p.m. So as we talk about, like briefly, just to touch on, there's different stages to the AI operating system. We don't have time to kind of go through all that today. But the point is you want to go from no AI, fully manual, to AI assisted and AI driven. And these voice agents that we're talking about, these are really like AI driven processes, basically. Yeah, and this can happen very, very quickly as well. This is not something that we've had uh, clients where literally we've been working with them for, what, three months? And it's yeah. totally transformed their business. And a lot of it, what we find is in terms of us trying to work out who are the best clients? It's, it's actually mindset. It's, and it's a mindset to say that I understand this technology is going to change the world. I don't fully understand how, but I need to start implementing it. Exactly. So the whole point is getting this competitive advantage. There's three accelerators, interactivity. So you've got high personalized customer experience, speed and capacity. So we're focusing on capacity specifically as a voice AI agent workflow, isn't it, PSJ? Yeah, so today, I mean, we, we've done interactivity last week and speed as well. So capacity, especially in phone, as Alec was saying, Alec said, you know, one person can make phone calls. AIs can do 50. It can be 500, it can be 5,000, actually. Um, and we're actually going to give you the opportunity uh, for, uh, later on to actually call our AI agent and experience it yourself. Exactly. So this is the whole point, right? You have the opportunity in business that if you've got something which works, if you take a bet, basically, or you, you, you do an initiative, in, in like normal sport like cricket, you could get like one run, four runs or six runs. Six runs is the maximum you can get if you smash it out, out of the, the field. But in business, you could get 10,000 runs if your AI you know, initiative for lead generation, lead conversion, whatever works, and you can grow much faster than everyone else. So you wanna take those asymmetric bets and AI is an asymmetric bet. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, so right now the asymmetry of opportunity and information um, is, is absolutely enormous. It's kind of what we, we're trying to help our clients kind of bridge that enormous gap, basically. But the companies that begin to sort of acquire that know-how are creating a, a, a huge asymmetry in terms of the competitive advantage. Exactly, because that's where the opportunities come for, you know, like in private equity companies are looking to like have which company is going to be the leaders of the future and have the new models. So let's talk about utilizing the power of AI voice agents. So this is very exciting stuff because this is technology that did not exist six months, 12 months ago, basically. And what we're going to be talking about here is what we call multimodal AI agents. So they can speak to you on the phone. They can also do tasks. They can also send you emails. They can WhatsApp you. They can also create reports as well. So this creates a wow experience where somebody could literally just fill out a form on your website, have a call done immediately, understand all the different issues that they've got. They can then get like a WhatsApp message, get a customized report and an email. So all of this means that you're proving that you are a responsive and interactive 
you know, business that's really on it, basically, isn't it? And I think it's just zooming out slightly, I think the thing to understand here is, is that, and I keep saying this, the days of humans doing first line support, taking first line support calls, and, you know, doing basic sales calls, they are coming to an end. Um, and we, and you're gonna, you're gonna hopefully have your minds blown when you talk to our sort of uh, AI call agent demo, and that's today. And we're constantly improving and speeding up and improving the prompt and the way it works. So within two years, it, it's not really gonna make sense to have humans doing most basic, uh, take, or taking or making most basic phone calls. Let's look at an example, right? So one of my friends has a recruitment business, okay? And it's in construction. And he's got like eight people that just take inbound calls only saying that like, I'm Peter, I'm a roofer or I'm a plumber or whatever it is like this. And I'm available for two weeks in Morecambe for these dates. So they're just doing data capture on the phone. So that's a fixed cost structure. You think about the recruitment industry, like they've got a certain amount of like people need to, you know, process a certain number of applicants so they can get a certain number of jobs. But what if you could actually process unlimited applicants with a lower cost structure and then have your team members responsible for generating new opportunities for sale? I mean, these sorts of things can transform your opportunities. So let's go into the next bit. So imagine you have three articulate, enthusiastic team members that spoke perfect English, were great on the phone, always followed your script and directions perfectly. How could they grow your business? Piers, if I get if you had three people in like all the different businesses that you've invested in, like surely some of the like teams that you've invested in over the years, they've always had team member shortages, isn't it? Right, and and like they, could, they didn't have the people that could focus on different revenue generating tasks. Well, that, that, that's what you're. That's what you spend a lot of your time raising money for is to uh, you know technology clearly, but it, it's it's to employ people and to be able to afford them. And I think you know one thing we're sort of missing out here as well is is training. So when when you're using AI agents and you want to change something. It's instantaneous. You don't have a training overhead either. Exactly, exactly. So imagine you've got three AI agents that joined your team, one for sales and query follow-ups, one for a customer reactivation campaign, one for customer support. So let's just talk about this, right? The difference between, you know, like how fast you follow someone up makes a big difference in like how, how responsive they're going to be. Because the minute someone fills out a web form, they're like interested then. But it's like the difference between salad and garbage is time, basically, right? Like, so if you wait too long to follow someone up, they're not going to get in touch with you. But if you've got someone that always going to follow somebody up straight away when they fill out a form, and then you've got like all your inactive customers, somebody else is reactivating those ones, and you've got, let's say, customer support for identifying issues, you're going to be a much more responsive, you have much more capacity in your organization than somebody who doesn't have these technologies, isn't it, right? We hear this a lot. We had a conversation, two conversations today with potential clients about this, about how do I, yeah, we do sales and we do SEO, we've got uh, advertising, you know, Google, whatever, but how do I change that conversion rate? And this is, this is how you do it. So let's look at this, right? So let's look at cost structure. So imagine, for example, you, you have like, you know, different call agents and then they were like on, you know, 24,000 a year, for example, 30 to 45% staff turnover, you know, they may or may not recommend additional services depending on how well you've done the training. Um, they can only call an inquiry one at a time. They're available on the contracted hours. Um, you know, manage three to four calls an hour or 40 calls a day, you know, variable note taking. So I had somebody else saying to me yesterday, um, and I was showing him a system which automatically you know, analyzed the call, summarized it, identifying the issues from it. And it also tagged in the database, the different issues. And he was like, we, we do this manually basically right you know like uh, so having ai that can automate this and always have all the perfect analytics because what you're missing out with is when you have the ai calling and you've got all the visibility you've got analytics you never had before you can actually see how someone's responding how enthused they are you know it just it just gives you so much more opportunity we both know that when we talk to clients that most companies just don't do it because it doesn't make any sense, you know, hiring people to go and listen to phone calls to work out how can they improve the training or did I miss an opportunity? It doesn't make any sense. You've got to almost double the size of your sales team. So you know, this is often the only way to do it. Yeah, and then like, for example, I was talking to somebody yesterday, they have four people doing outbound phone calls and obviously they've got a manager for that as well. So the more people you have, the more overhead you require to maintain and manage that as well, isn't it, right? So having, you know, AI departments that can run different things can mean that you can actually change your cost structure in that regard. So the whole point here is that there's many opportunities for using voice, immediate inquiry, follow up, pre-consultation lead qualification. We're doing a lot of work with people that want AI estimation tools. This might be estimating the cost for fitting out a roof, fitting out a bathroom, cleaning a place, um, any kind of cosmetic surgery. And the point is people want to get an idea straight away about what could be possible. And AI is great in this by voice. 
customer reactivation. If you decide to buy something on a website, but you didn't complete it, it can call you, you know, customer success, customer support, so many things that can be done with this essentially. Cool, so that's all good. So here, this is the one. So if you wanna try it yourself, basically, because experience trumps theory, this is where you can actually go. So if you go to labs.implementai.io, and um, obviously listen to our conversation first, our, our presentation first, but then do it later on, and you can actually experience that for yourself, isn't it? Yeah, and and test it. So they go for it. Um, yeah, people do sort of go for it, have a joke with it, but do it sort of in a, in a sort of as if you were. A, it's your business, or if you haven't yeah. got a business, answer it properly. You have a business, but also just test it and ask it things and try and take it off piece and just see how it responds. And I think and, and the key thing there, what we're constantly doing is chipping away at the response time. But here, what I would say to you is answer it properly about your business and you will see what report you get and the different details, because that's exactly the kind of system you can integrate into your own business, you know, and then, and then get advantages from there. So let's have a little example. Hi, this is Jess from Implement AI. I'm an AI specialist here to help you dis Sorry. discover the best opportunities to implement artificial intelligence in your business. Can you tell me your name first? I'm Sandra. Great, it's nice to meet you, Sandra. Sandra, please, can you confirm your company name? Currently, I'm enjoying a gap period, so no company name. But I used to work uh, at Stellar Performance. That's perfectly fine, Sandra. Could you tell me a little? So you see like how in how responsive it is, right? Just I'm just giving a small snippet, basically, from within there, that it will contextually reply to what you've got. But at the same time, also, it will always stay within the script. So people worry about like, oh, can these things be taken off piece and stuff like this? No, with these voice agents, they cannot because you cannot like, you know, take it off the piece that you want. And the whole point here is that you want to then have a specific voice AI UX, a user experience. And we can go, go into a bit more detail on that, Piers. But it's quite, the, the, you, this is now voice UX. So we've always worried about, you know, web UX and apps. Now you're talking about voice UX and it can make a massive difference. And we haven't quite done it yet, but you can even have systems where they listen to the caller, make assumptions about who they are, even their accent, and then respond in a way in which would feel more familiar to that person. Yes. So so I think this is something that we've been discussing with some different clients that basically it's possible to also have a hyper-localized agent. So we find that like, obviously for English clients and English accent is obviously great, but what we actually found when I was using an Australian one, an Australian AI agent, um, tone is more important than accent. So it, it's how you design the conversation, how you design the prompt, and how you also design the behavior of the AI and the actual internality and, and, and the empathy is very important because I've had many people respond saying that the empathy and the, um, the, the, the humanness of, of the AI experience was, was was quite remarkable. And this is intentional. This doesn't happen by accident, basically. Also, and don't forget, we, we don't need to go into much detail here, but you now talk about being multilingual as well. Yes. This is not just English. You can have someone that says, you can maybe hear a Spanish accent and say, oh, yeah, would you rather I spoke Spanish? Yeah, so that, that'll come afterwards. But like, for example, for Irish accents, Scottish accents, I found that like Scottish accents and Irish accents are generally regarded as more friendly. So the thing is, you can actually, if you think about like conversion optimization and you think about like how you want to like engineer the experience, you want the person to feel as relaxed as possible and to engage as much as possible. So if you use, for example, female voice or appropriately whatever is required, and you have like a soft speaking, and you also have the conversation in a kind of like a tennis almost back and forth in, in, in a kind of cadence, you can then have a very comfortable and very reassuring experience, which means that you will get the outcomes you want, basically. And all of but this is by design. Voice as well. So if you're, if you're a smaller business, you want to be the face for the voice of it, you can use your voice. So when that customer, client, support call gets escalated to you perhaps, or they talk to you, it's the same voice. Exactly. And it also builds that trust and that, that reputation. And the other thing to think about is people say, well, what about, it's not gonna replace a person, but the thing is, what you have to understand is voice replaces forms. It's a lot easier to um, dictate and type than, than, than it is to type and fill out a form. And there's so much high resolution information. Like I've compared 
And the number of forms that we've had filled out from different areas with like how much information we get when we verbally ask the same questions, we get at least 40 to 50% more information verbally than someone typing on the form. And you lose all that high resolution nuance about the motivation, the, the goals, the information, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not even talking about emotional tone analysis. I'm, I'm just talking about like just the, the resolution in for the information about what they're looking for and, and all that kind of stuff, basically. Well, and what, what's interesting is that people don't quite always quite understand this is that you can have unstructured information, a conversation, a transcript. And what large language models are very good at is plucking out the information you actually want. And that can then be can become structured information and then can be inserted into a field, into your CRM or spreadsheet, whatever you, wherever you want it to be. We're going to go through questions a bit more later on, but I just, I'll just address one right, right now. Uh, I had a question from Nin, basically, if the agent can be pre-informed with certain info to help with the call, such as interest in boiler repair. Yes, it can, basically, right? So the whole point here is that you create like hyper-personalized solutions that can work with things. So let's look at an example for customer support, right? Sometimes we might need to like have situations where people need to be called. Um, I'll give an example. Like, so this is an example for like the financial advice. You need to like call people every every year you know to kind of like do like an annual financial review and you need to get questions to see if they're if they're up to speed with everything so let's look at an example how that might work hi i'm eva from relax financial planning i'm here to help you with your annual financial review my job is to make sure that we have all the up-to-date information so that your financial future stays on track can we quickly go through some questions it will only take a minute um, i'm kind of busy I completely understand that you're busy and I appreciate your time. Rest assured, I'll try to make this as quick and efficient as possible. Okay, it won't fine. take long. Thank you for your cooperation. Let's get started, One, Have there been any changes to your financial income in the last six months? Um, yeah, I got promotion at work, so my salary's gone up. That's great to hear. Congratulations on your promotion and the increase in your salary. It's always exciting to see your- I'm just gonna pause that there, but you can see that like if you had like let's say a form you'd sent someone saying any changes to your occupation it would be yes you would lose a lot of that resolution and, and like you know this 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 goes into a lot more detail and um, with the call but it's a bit, it is to be clear Alec, as well we haven't edited that we haven't sort of clipped off the the gaps to make it sound make them shorter that is as as it is exactly exactly so so that that kind of gives you that information yeah. on like on those things i'll just give you one more example um Yesterday, uh, my mum actually had a chronic medication review. So like, basically, like, if you're taking different medicines, you need to have a call every year to basically see, like, are there any issues with the medicine you're taking, any changes or anything like this? And, and one of my friends has got GP practice. He's got, like, nurses that are making all these phone calls. And they're, they're very busy and they should be seeing patients. The thing is, you, they might make lots of phone calls. They can't reach somebody. AI can actually go through that and ask all the questions and capture everything in the right way so you can see all the information. So where you've got, like, a protocol where you have to engage with the customer, ask specific questions and go through all those details. This is where AI can work very, very nicely, basically, right? But voice agents are multidimensional. They don't just have to be via the phone. You could have a voice agent on your website as well, because we ever talked to someone earlier today where they've got many people visiting their website, but not many people are filling out forms and things like this. So the question is like, how could you have a more interactive experience? So before I play it, anything you want to add, Piers? No, I think, um... What I, what I, the intrigue I find is that people can be quite, not dismissive, but they think, oh, right, okay, I've kind of heard this before, I've seen this before, and you haven't, you have not seen. If you, you know, what's happening here is you're having speech to text, it's being put together with a prompt, going to a large language model, it's coming back out, it's doing its things, coming back out, then you've got text to speech based on what voice you want. And that's happening in about 150, 200 milliseconds. So this conversational ability with a, a, an intelligence has not existed before. And if you can get out there and get this in front of your prospects, your customers quickly and early before other people do, you're gonna change your engagement and your relationship with them. Exactly, and then you can also like fine tune it based on like the conversations, what's working, and also with your knowledge base of your business, all those different areas within there. So let's look at like how it could be on a website, for example. If right? you sell a high value product or service, right now your website's probably missing one thing. And that's the ability to do a needs discovery and actually ask the questions to the customer about what they're looking for. This can often be a barrier to customers who appear on your website not taking any actions because they don't want to book a consultation. So let's have a look at how an AI sales system could help that. So if it's on the website, you just click to wake it up. LA from Implement AI. I'm an AI specialist here to help you discover the best opportunities to implement artificial intelligence in your business. Can you tell me your name first? Yep, yeah, it's Peter. Great. 
It's nice to meet you, Peter. Peter, please, can you confirm your company name? Yeah, it's ABC Bathrooms and Interiors. ABC Bathrooms and Interiors sounds great. Could you tell me a little about what your company does? Yeah, we help people basically discover a new option for their bathroom or their interior. So interior fit out services. That's fantastic, Peter. Are you looking to use artificial intelligence to grow sales or reduce costs? Uh, both. I want to grow sales and reduce costs. That makes perfect sense, Peter. I'm just going to pause that there. But like the point is you can like in a very intuitive way capture a lot more information. And at the same time, it's like it's much it's a much smoother UX because you literally can then also direct someone to the information, put custom information together based on their needs and all, all those different elements rather than waiting on your yeah. the work. You don't feel as though there's no rush. You can come back to whatever you feel like it. And what's fascinating is that at the end, end, end of most of the call, these calls, when we listen to them, the person the AI is talking to is thanking the AI as if it was a human. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Like, you know, like, and there's so many areas that can kind of like work within that. The other thing that's quite nice is like the ability to upsell and cross sell, for example. So here, let's look at an example, let's say so from this is the, a, a different area. Let me just go back one step, uh, go into here. Extra food order. Let's go. How may I help you? Okay, I'd like to order um, a new garden sy system, basically, like a hose pipe and all the areas to help look after my garden. Hi there, that sounds like a great idea. To better assist you, could you please provide me with some more details? Are you looking for a specific type of hose pipe or any other specific garden tools or accessories? Yeah, I want a 20 meter hose pipe and I also want to make sure I got the adapter to go to a normal tap. Great, a 20 meter hose pipe and a tap adapter. Let me check our inventory for you. I have a high quality 20 meter hose pipe available that is durable and kink resistant. It comes with a universal tap adapter Sound, that should fit that, most That sounds taps. great. I'm glad to hear that. The 20 meter hose pipe and tap adapter are priced at piece 25. 99, would you like to add anything else to your order, such as sprinklers, spray guns, or any other garden, other garden accessories? Uh, no, I'm good for now, but thank you very much. You saw there, I did two things. I, I was able to like interrupt it and then, you know, go, go, go to different areas. But at the same time also, it was, a, it was in, intuitively offering an upsell or a cross sell basically. Now people do not do this. Like how much people, how much money do you spend on training courses to get someone to like understand like what they can upsell and cross sell. And, and they just don't have the time or energy. And I'm not criticizing people, right? Like uh, people are just busy, right? You know, there could be a million reasons and, you know, customer complaints and everything like this. But, but the point here is having a consistent experience basically, right? And this is where AI can excel essentially. And the key thing there is, is that one is, is being able to butt in, but this is not walkie talkie. So this is not, you know, somebody speaks over, somebody else speaks. It's not a walkie talkie conversation. You can butt in, interject, correct it, and you can even correct it quite further down the line in the conversation, like your name, for example, if it sort of misspells it or something, and it will go back into the conversation and correct it. So it's, it's intuitive. It's very, very different experience. Exactly. So, so the whole point there is like you, it can be to add another dimension to an e-commerce website. It can act, play the role of like a kind of designer. Like, I mean, you know, there's so many ways you can enhance this and just make it more intuitive. I mean, my mum, for example, has, has done like, you know, calls with the AI. She found it very personable, very human. You compare that to like, you know, health insurance where I've, I've used the AI for like the, you know, speak what you want health or like, you know, which kind of insurance. And it's just, they're not, they're not smart. They're just they're basically like, very basic recognition systems and they're, they're quite poor basically. Just to add another dimension, there are a lot of things you can do with voice, with analytics, so enhanced analytics. So with the audio that comes in, you can also do emotional analysis across 48 different dimensions. This is an add-on that some people choose to have, which can then detect, you know, like annoyance, frustration, you know, like engagement, enthusiasm, excitement. And then from that, you're able to then filter out who to address first or who not to address first. So you literally have x-ray vision that you didn't have before, basically. And, and it's not just that uh, people say, oh, what, what can you understand from a transcript? This works from a transcript, from audio, and also video and facial expressions. Exactly. So, so the point here is like, for example, imagine like in recruitment, as we were talking with somebody, like when you present a job opportunity to them, you can see how motivated, how enthused they were about it. And you can actually measure that basically, you know? So there's, there's a lot of enhanced analytics that are possible from this. So before we kind of go into a bit more detail, basically, anything you want to add on that, Piers, like in terms of the opportunity zone of, of voice AI, basically? No, I, I think that 
this is quite early days, but I think that this is a huge opportunity to change the way. So Alok and I joke about this, right? We're kind of saying that we are trying to automate ourselves out of the business. So we set up Implement AI pretty quickly, lots of things to do, had a website, you know, the, the sales are more us, quite frank. And now we're saying, okay, hang on. So now people are going to interact with AI agents, several different ones, including a call agent or web agent and a sales research agent and a sales agent, long before they start interacting with the humans. By the time they're interacting with the human, they probably hope they had a great experience. Also, they, they trust the technology uh, and they're qualified. I mean, it's a win-win. Exactly. And so I think the key thing here is that like, you've got the opportunity literally to add a whole team into your business. And if you add a whole team into your business that your competitors do not have, you can do more than they can do. So how do you do this? So when we work with, with businesses, our primary way to engage is what we call our AI Activate program. The AI Activate program is basically where we work with you in a 60 day sprint, and it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's it's where we work with you what you know, one-to-one, peers and myself, and we're there to help you understand a few things. One, your unique business what your workflows are and how you sell. And then from that, we'll break down what you sell, your functions and activities, what your cost structures are, and we'll map that against the opportunity zones with AI, where the technology right now is mature and can help you get an ROI from it. So then we're doing all the work for you, so you know exactly what you need to do, basically, right? Like, you don't have to, like, figure out, research, different things like this. We will give you, like, these are the opportunity zones. We'll give you the policies and governance because you have to have that those very powerful technology. And then we'll work with you on one particular AI workflow and we'll build a proof of concept and a solution for you so you can see how that works in your business. And then most importantly as well, we'll also upskill and train your team. So the point here is that you've got everything you need to get your business transformed. And like, remember I showed you before, like one call agent is like 24,000 a year, for example. And imagine a three, that's 72,000 a year. No one's got like a spare 72 grand a year to like, you know, plus taxes, plus this, plus that, you know, like working with us, you can actually get the opportunity to have more than that for much, much less than that, basically, you know, so that that's where it's very important to like, you know, don't lose time, start making your, your point to be able to get ahead, essentially, isn't it? Yeah. And this is the first step. This is our program. Um, and one of the things we also have at the end of the program, what we clearly want you to have is a roadmap. Okay, I get it. You get stakeholder buying, people see it working, they understand it, but then what next? What what workflow do we sort of tick off next, go after next? What pain point do we sort of dispense with using this technology? Exactly. So the question then comes into like, where can we use AI? So here's some of the different areas. So marketing, for example, you can have like, imagine you could upgrade your marketing department with like, you know, like, four AI agents that will like help you with marketing strategy, research. Like I, I was talking with somebody yesterday and then they sent me a tool where they basically had, had AI analyzed how to sell to me. And I, and I shared it with peers actually, laughed actually, because it wasn't accurate. But the thing is like, there's ways you can actually do this much, much better. And um, where we built our own like AI research agent, which can go to LinkedIn and do analysis on what kind of company it is, how many employees, all the different details like this. So we can help you have your own bespoke tools. Cause like I said it before, having specialist AI, having stuff that other people do not have integrated into your workflow is the way you want to kind of go with these things basically. So you can have a whole new set of, you know, analytics and testing and content. Uh, and uh, one thing you mentioned there, you've got, you've got to be careful of. A lot of companies, you know, SaaS companies, AI companies, something, something dot AI. And what you got to be careful of is that they're all there, they're not just taking a large language model and putting stripe between it and you. <laughs> Literally, that, that, is, that is what a lot of companies are doing and they're raising millions of pounds to do it as well. So be very careful about sort of looking at AI and thinking, okay, well, AI, I can go and buy it off the shelf. And my, my view is, and our view is, is that you know, SaaS is like a bell curve. They want to go off to the middle of it, the highest sort of addressable market, whereas actually you might be an outlier. You might have a use case that, or a way in which you want to do business that's specific for your business. And what this technology allows you to do now is build technology for each of these opportunity zones here to run the business the way in which you need to run it. And an important point here is, is often missed. So look at marketing, marketing strategy, sales strategy. It's strategy. People forget that. These AIs, we have a course for business leaders, you can use them, and we use them all the time, as a sounding board, as a psychic, as a wingman or lady, whatever the hell you want to call it, to talk to and bounce ideas off. So don't forget, this is not just about imp implementing things that sort of execute and do and tick off tasks. It's the strategic level that can make a, a massive difference. Exactly. And then like even within sales, like you can do like localization. So for imagine, for example, you were targeting 
you know, your broad customer base in English, but let's just say there was an opportunity to have, let's say, a, a Polish version, like to target like the, the Polish demographic or Chinese demographic. You can have a whole area of your website in Polish or in Chinese with you speaking in Polish or Chinese and with like, you know, different products and packages, you know, explained for them. I mean, someone's going to like be much more attuned to your business. And before it was like just not cost effective or resource effective to create all these different kind of like versions of it. Or I was with a different business that they wanted to kind of have their same content and videos in Spanish and different languages. And we were showing them how exactly they can do this basically. So you can actually like expand your capacity in sales, operations, customer service support, innovation and finance in many different ways. And we're putting together a white paper on the AI operating system. But the point here is like you build in these capabilities, your competition, you know, don't stand a chance. And just to be clear as well, when you're talking about you can now speak a different language, and we're not talking about audio, we're talking about audio, yes, obvious one, or video as well. And not only do you speak in a different language, it almost, it deep fakes your mouth so that you're, you're, you're making these shapes of your lips that you would make if you were speaking that language. Exactly. And I, I've had like, for example, I did one in Hindi, right? I don't speak Hindi, right? I need to learn, but like, uh, and um, my, my cousins were like, wow, your Hindi is really good, basically, right? You know, and I was just laughing. Really? <laughs> Let's face it, sometimes the, you know, we've had feedback sometimes that the, the translation's not as it would be for some kind of highly skilled translator, but then you're not paying them 50 grand a year, are you? Uh, exactly. But in most cases, a person's going to prefer that interaction than uh, at least you try to talk in their sort of native tongue. Exactly. So let's just talk about a different angle of voice AI. So if you had lots of phone calls coming in, for example, you might be missing a lot of these phone calls. So voice AI can also be used to analyze inbound calls. So we've got a voice AI agent that can analyze a whole load of calls and it can identify, for example, this person um, didn't book an appointment. So here it says who didn't book an appointment. And then, for example, what they were looking for. So this was like a 15,000 pound type treatment. And they were interested in, in this solution, but they were confused and they were playing golf. So voice AI can also be used to detect opportunities within your inbound calls as well, basically, right? So we can use voice AI agents either as like a kind of like an auditor and, and almost like a sales system to actually do it. But then the, the AI could actually just reach out on behalf by WhatsApp, by, you know, by voice and then engage that person as well, basically. So you can have like... And this it's so starting in teams, Alec, isn't it? So you're not going to try and build an AI that can do all of this. No. You can have an AI that's very, very good at analyzing phone calls and transcribing them, essentially. That then is going to take that summary and hand it over to an agent that understands what your sort of sales process is, and maybe exactly. a bunch of script or some content. Uh, so you have different agents you start to put together as a team, and that's where we're going with this. Exactly. So the whole point is that you build your AI operating system in your team that can do all these different things. So we just talked about like, you know, there's so many areas of like, you know, management, marketing, sales operations and areas that you can improve on things. So the key thing here is like having no plan is a bad plan. Correct, Piers? Yeah, let's go through this list. I hate slides like this, but let's go through it. So, so not having a plan is, is definitely a bad plan in this case. Not because it's not so much you'd have to have a plan. Lots of companies say to us, oh, we need an AI rollout um, sort of um, project. Like, no, that's, that's, gonna, that's doomed to failure. What you're doing is looking like, like an x-axis and a y-axis, looking at workflows, things you like, that are pain points, things you want to automate, looking at what the technological, where the technological frontier is, it's like a jagged frontier as well. Where is it? What can you do today? What works? What can you change in the future in three, six, nine months? And you have like a matrix basically, and you start take, taking them off one by one. You don't go at it. Um, so with a big sort of plan, this thick to implement AI, it's not going to work. So you start with things that AI activates. So understand, like we said, policy, governance, training. We look at workflows, we automate it. You get stakeholder buy-in. People begin to see the power of it. Then you move on to the other program, which is a bit longer, saying, okay, we get it now. Let's start really changing our business, implementing AI. So you get into long to 12 month programs. If you don't do this, I spent many years talking about shadow IT. So, you know, millennials coming to work with phones, they can multitask these feed of things at once. And they get to the office and they've got know, an old desk phone with a dialer and a computer that's not connected to it. Where in shadow AI is a whole different kettle of fish. You don't want people using artificial intelligence that is outside the sort of boundary of your corporate IT, essentially. So it's very important that you have that policy and that governance in place and that you're actually meeting your team halfway because nobody in the future is going to work, want to work for a company that doesn't augment them with AI so they can automate the mundane and do the more meaningful work that they entered that career to do. Um, Rapid transition, this is the other point, we said it earlier, I'll say it again. 
you can't see any hands, right? This is not cloud transition. This is not digital transformation. Let's come back to it in two years. We're busy this year. This this curve, as I was saying, we're at the sort of bottom, the foothills, and it's probably steeper. Than that. If you look at some of the uh, GitHub um, adoption rates, it literally is vertical. So yeah. it's taking off, and as it starts to take off, and you're here in an exponential world, it's going to be very, very hard to catch up. And actually, you wrote a blog about this. You go to our website or LinkedIn about uh, some McKinsey research saying that some of the AI leaders are already creating six times uh, higher total shareholder returns than the laggards. So the leaders are already winning, and the question is going to be, can you catch up? The regulators are getting there. We're seeing some movement there. It's a bit slow. But the first one, the last point here, is the key one. And I've actually put, a, put the QR code up there as well. Training. There's no point handing someone a saxophone if they don't have to play it. It's going to sound awful. Same with AI. These tools are incredibly powerful. We had a client today. Uh, we, we first, probably our, probably our first proper use case, Alec, isn't it? For image. Uh, taking yeah, vision. For sort of AI vision and multimodal AI. And it blew our minds. And it, it's going to blow the client's mind as well. But to understand that and be able to use it, you have to be trained. These exactly. are really, really powerful tools. And the people... If they are trained, you're going to maximize the value the organization gets out of it. Exactly. So I think just to touch on a couple of points that you've made. Number one, people aren't going to want to work for a company that is not imp that is not like AI enabled because they will be de-skilling compared to their, their peers, basically. Right. That's number one. And also they know that they will not be promotion opportunities. If you work in a mill when like, you know, a manual mill, when like the new technology ones are arising, you know, you know that your manual mill is not going to go anywhere, basically. Right. You know, like the whole point is like the, you know the rules have changed you know you've gone from a steam train to a bullet train basically right like and if you're still on the steam train you know you're going to struggle so then the other thing is like with your team members they need to have a clear vision that like okay we're not going to get rid of people we're going to have a vision we're going to grow we're going to do all these things we're going to work as a team get the ideas together we've had very good experience with some companies where they we've, we've worked as a catalyst for them and their team have really got engaged and helped them give more ideas about what to do because the other thing is like if, if people start using ai to do their job and you've not had any policies or anything like that. I've seen people that do two jobs basically because they can easily do their job in half the time and then you lose all that productivity. So that's productivity leakage basically. You know? so I think on, on, things... on our training, so we've had uh, one client in particular, you know what I'm talking about, where a training session, so they did an AI Accelerate, actually a longer program, but the training session, when people said, I understand how it works now. Mindset. Limited AI, they had the mindset, but they knew how it worked, they knew what it could do, you know, windows, images, numbers, sounds, and it transformed their business. Then everyone came back to the senior leadership team saying, hang on a second, we could do this or this or this, Luckily, you can't do them all, but it triggered ideas because they now had an understanding and confidence in the technology. This morning, I, I, I outlined a way where people, a certain kind of like high turnover workforce could be engaged and there could even be a financial incentive for it by using AI. So you can actually transform jobs, but I can't go into more details there. So the whole point here is you want to start strong, basically, Piers, isn't it? Yeah. 2024. So 2023 was when this all kind of you know, it kicked off. People started to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it next year, right? Now is the time. During 2024, going back to the previous slide, you don't just have to have a plan. You, you've got to start, and clearly we, this is what we do, right? But you've got to start thinking about implementing AI and then ideally actually doing it, not wholesale, but just getting your organization and your senior leadership team to your big organization to the point where they understand the power of this technology, where it's going, how it's going to impact your business, your sector, your revenue, your cost base, all of that. That's what business is about. And the time horizon is that 20, 24 is the year we will look back on in terms of that exponential curve. That's just the, the bottom before it ticks up. We're already seeing, you see our podcast, we're already seeing now the news flow is already insane. Yeah, exactly. So this is our AI Activate 60 day sprint. Uh, this, is, this is our, yes, training, fantastic, worth looking at. But if you're serious about it, this is the uh, program that we'd like to talk to you about. AI Activate, a 60-day spin. Now, this can be, so today we'll focus on voice agents. It can be anything. So it's amazing what we've talked to our clients about. Sometimes they'll want something done. Uh, can an AI get me out of bed, get me to work on time, make me a cup of tea? Um, not yet. It's coming. But sometimes it's not quite there yet. But the point is, there are other things they can do today. And the really big things that's going to transform their business, the technology is sort of 
racing towards being able to do it very, very quickly. So in six or nine months, that'll be something you can implement. Imagine like, for example, a voice AI, you want to implement it, right? And you've got like X number of like online inquiries that are coming every single day. If you called every single one of those, you're going to get much more responses, much more conversion. If you had people that were customers before that have gone, that, that have gone inactive or complained about something and you have the AI reaching out on, on behalf, I kind of call it an emotional buff, a crumple zone, basically, right? So like I was talking to my friend who's got a GP practice, he has 800 calls a day and the staff are like burnt out, tired and, you know, really demotivated because people are really quite angry and upset. But if you've got the AI that's doing initial screening and phone calls, it becomes almost like an emotional crumple zone, which then means that you've got the impartial analytics about what's happening behind the scenes and you can understand who to follow up with. So, you know, AI Activate is the first place that you can get started. And Piers, you like boats, don't you, basically? Yeah, I used to have one, but like everyone else, I got rid of it. Um, so uh, this is the technology. This is the, this is my ship leaving the harbor analogy, right? So it is leaving the harbor, and and this is a, a big issue, not just a business, of society generally. So you want to you need to make sure you're on it. You know, Alok and I decided you want to be on it, but you need to make sure your business is on it because the opportunity to create value is enormous. This is bigger than the internet, and whether you're using voice, whether you're one of other AI agents, you know. This is this is what we're here to do. We we believe in this. We think this is going to change the world, and we want you to participate in that as well. So, if you want to get started with AI Activate, as I say, you've got the details here. We have a saving for companies that want to kind of join that. So, you've got the details on here. And as I say, like you obviously can get in touch with us and learn more about it. But the point here is like. If you think about like, you know, going back to like a team of three would be 72,000 a year, right? And then they got all the different areas of training and upskilling and everything on top of it. You could have more than three three agents that kind of call and do different things for you, basically, isn't it? We've got some clients who are rolling out four agents. Yeah. So exactly. we're now in the kind of pilot phase, but eventually we are going to, depending on our clients want and where the market is, we're going to industrialize some of these agents and create a team of agents that can be deployed in any business. Exactly. This is our training as well. So if you're interested in training, what we've put together kind of by popular demand really is a, is a pack. So these are the most, these are the most popular sort of training courses, AI fundamentals. What is it? Jargon? How does it work? Mindset. Prompt engineering. We're now all being, you know, we're all facing prompts. So if you've got Microsoft 365 Copilot, you face with a prompt. Well, how do you use it? What, what do you do? How do you avoid garbage in, garbage out? So that's quite an important one. And one of the first things people often use AI for in any business, especially marketing, content marketing, is um, content creation. We also have a co-pilot course as well. So there's no AI-ready workforce. You need to create your own. And that becomes your competitive advantage is one thing, basically. And if you don't, people are, people are they're not going to want to work for you. <laughs> exactly. So if you want to listen to more, obviously join up our, our podcast. But, you know, thank you very much. Let's go through some questions. All right, let's have a quick look at the uh, chat here. So I've got one question here. So can the, from Nin, can the agent check availability on diary schedule and book somebody in? Yes, it can, basically. So the way you would kind of do this is you can like have it where it would then be able to um, provide like a calendar link or whatever like that to the person by WhatsApp and they can select and have anything. Because obviously, even during the time of a conversation, some booking could actually change. So by using Calendly or something like that, the person can have it however they want. So totally can do that. And, and it can also like, understand from them whether they prefer mornings or afternoons or anything like that so you like you're very good at like understanding the intent and the and the um controlling the conversation so you can actually have the agent you know like directed in the way you want it basically i've got james here a technical question i mean most conversations a uh, phone conversation think about it if, if it's if it's text it's nowhere near any any token limit in no. terms of what large language models are today and just to kind of just give you the kind of context of what it is you can give the, you, know, you, you make the agent play a role, but then you can also support it with an underlying a knowledge base. And, and again, that's one of the big use cases we're finding from our clients is like having the right knowledge base to support the internal training and also the external communication um, to, to customer support and everything like that, basically. But yeah, but listen, hope you guys found it um, interesting and engaging and, 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 you know, voice I think is huge. I just think everybody likes to use the phone. And if you can bring you know, magic essentially to, you know, the non-technology and like, you know, elderly people, anybody can who can answer, access a phone has access to these things. You just expand your market massively, basically. And if you want to experience it, go to labs.implementai.io and take a call. Exactly. That's well, it. We'll be doing more of these. Uh, they seem to go down well. 
Um, we're going to obviously keep changing the subject. Don't forget to sign up for AI Inside a newsletter. You get some strategic upsides every week. Listen to the podcast, and we'll uh, we'll see you again soon.